bring to you a message from God. Amen. 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 I knew you were coming. That's what it's entitled. I knew you were coming. Let's bow heads. Father, it's not about me standing here. It's all about you. Amen. Come remove me. May I decrease and you increase. Amen. And may each one of us today accept you for who you are so that our worship could be meaningful today. Take full control. Speak to our hearts and our minds today. In Jesus' name. Amen. I remember we were discussing vividly in our lesson review with Job and what is going on there. If you didn't know by now, we are in a great controversy. Underline that. Yeah. Underline that. Yeah. So the battle is not for clothes. No. The battle is not for food. No. The battle is for the mind. The mind. Yes. Who controls the mind wins the battle. Amen. Amen. That's what is going on. Yes. We could go up, we could go down, we could jump high, we could go wide, but the battle is for the mind. Yes. Satan won the mind, Christ won the mind. So that war is raging. So it's left to us to understand what is happening here. And as we live in the what we call the last days or what Daniel said in the end of time, we will see a lot of things that is happening that is alarming. And you will wonder if you do not feed yourself on God's word and understand God's word, none of us will be able to stand. What is sure is the word of God. Amen. Nothing else is sure. God's word is sure. Amen. And that's what we have to live by. There was a story being told in 1998, a long time ago. It was one of the most devastating earthquakes to hit one of the, the countries. Armenia. It was on December 7th, 1988. The time was 11.41 a.m., local time. In the northern region of that country, that earthquake was 6.8 on the rectus scale. Destroy sums, flatten buildings, cost lives more than 30,000 people. Right? The story of a nameless father searching for his son in a destroyed school building has since inspired thousands. Immediately following the initial quake, the father had rushed to the school, which has been totally flattened. So if you rush to the school and you see it totally flattened, what will you think? Everybody gone. But remembering a promise he made to his son a long time ago, he started digging using his hands. No matter what, he told his son, I will always be there for you. Does that sound familiar? Yes. Yes. Who said that? Yes. Jesus yes. said that. Jesus said that. So he told his son that because his son was afraid. Maybe of certain things in the school and, and other things like that. But determined the approximate location where the son's school was. He began moving rubble, concrete. Others arrived. And taking in the devastation, destruction, attempt to pull him away. Attempt to pull him away. But he will not be distracted. He made a promise to his son. So he will not be distracted. He had made a promise. Firefighters came. Emergency workers came. All of them tried to restrain him. But because of the promise, he was continued to dig, removed, piece by piece. The emergency workers remind him, 
you could have glass and um, gas leak you could have fire explosion he was in real danger we will take care of it that's what it told him but it told him there is no way that your son could survive this there is no way that your son could survive that but the father kept on digging father kept on digging one stone at a time finally after 38 hours how many hours 38 right yeah. all right 38 hours almost two days sometimes we come to church for a few hours and we find it hard right but here is after 38 hours of digging he suddenly heard a voice dad is that you I knew you were coming. Dad, I told the other kids, do not worry, because you promised to come for me. Amen. The man saved 14 children that day, including his son. Amen. What a promise. Yes. What a promise, right? Yes. Some of us here, Jesus is coming. Maybe when he was 14, maybe when he was 12, maybe when he was 10, we hear he's coming, right? A lot of years pass when he might actually say, he ain't come yet, right? A lot of us may lose faith because he ain't come yet. A lot of us might doubt and say, well, Jesus ain't coming again. I will stand here to let you know, don't let down your God. Yeah. In, the, in, the, in the blink of an eye, Jesus could be here. Yeah. At any moment, he could be here. But you see, the, the moral of that story, and what is important in that story, the perseverance of the Father, yeah. the promise he had made to, to his son. Do we make promises to God? Do we? Yeah. How many of us keep it? Do we make vows to God? How many of us keep it? Do we make resolution each year, the beginning of the new year? And the time January 1, we break it already before the sun goes down? You see, the Christian life we, is called for persevering. Even though things may be rough, tough, whatever you, you name it. We still need to persevere. Amen. So in this waiting period, I call it. In this waiting period, we have waited a long time since the angels asked the disciples, why do you stand here looking in the sky? Since they asked that, we have been waiting. This same Jesus, who has been taken from you to heaven, will come back in the same manner as you see him go. And that is according to Acts, <coughs> verse 1 and 11, that you had in the scripture reading. So, within the Bible time, the disciples waited. John waited, Peter waited, Paul waited, they waited. Because if Jesus made that promise to them, he will come back. Amen. And if he made that promise to us today, he will come back. So while we wait, what should we be doing? Sometimes when you watch the church, it seems that we're in a rocking chair. Forward, backward, and we're going nowhere. While we wait, what should we be doing? While we wait, how should we be preparing? I stand here to let you know, it must come a time in our Christian life, where we are ready. Yes. Yeah? Yes. We must come in our, in our Christian life where we say we are ready. Mm. Job was ready. Job was ready. After all his encounter and his battle, he said, Naked I come, what? Naked I go. He was ready. Paul was ready. He said, I fought what? I could fight. 
So they were ready. The question is for us. We have to be ready. We have to be ready. If we go along the notion of getting ready, you know what's going to happen? Jesus will come and we'll be still saying, I'm getting ready. There must be a point in our Christian experience with the Lord where we say, I am ready. So Job, in what we study in this quarter, was not afraid of death. If I ask us to show our hands here of anybody who wants to die, none of us want to die. Believe me. Our color don't want to die. Our color don't want to die. We don't take bombs and strap our own ourselves and blow ourselves up. We, we don't want to die. How many black people see doing that? Very few. We really do not want to die. I'd say most colored, like we, they prefer to live. But the time will come, as one individual said. I went many funerals since I came to this country. But all of us who sit in here, we're in a line. Our number ain't called yet. We don't know when our number is going to call. That is why we need to be ready at all times. We need to be ready 24 hours a day. So, while we wait, let's learn something from the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1 and verse 14. See what was going on while they was waiting. See what was happening while they was waiting. And see if we're doing that today. Measure it with, with, with our own situation and see if we are doing it today. Acts 1, 14. Are we there? Acts 1, 14. I know there's few Bibles in church today, right? Everything is... Being, being on hold now. You know, everything is, is modern technology. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But use it to the honor and glory of God. Spend more time using it to the honor and glory of God. Acts 114. Let's read it together. Just in case somebody might have goes off. Let's read it together so they will hear voices. Acts 114. Read together, congregation. So they're continuing in what? Pray and what? So somehow, while they was waiting, they were praying. Amen. While they were waiting for Christ to come, they were praying. Are we doing that today? And when I say praying, I don't just mean a five minutes in the morning and a five minutes in the evening and that's it enough. That won't work. We have to spend diligent time on our knees and diligent time in God's Word. If we're doing that, we are not waiting. So while I was waiting, they were praying. And I like the word they used there. They were in one accord. Yes. Huh? Yes. They was in what? One accord. One accord. Yes. It's not who high and no. who low. No. But it was in one accord. There was no fighting. Yes. God will listen to our prayer when we're in one accord. Yes. When we're in one accord. Let's look at Acts. 2 and verse 1. Chapter 2 and verse 1. 2, 1. Read it together. You see, you see the recurring decimal? One accord? You see the recurring decimal in one accord? So it was there. In Acts 1 14, it was there in Acts 2 and verse 1. Let's look at 2 41. See what happens. When we want to call, what will happen? Mm. 2 41. Read. And you 
see what happens when you're in one account? You see, how, you see what happens when we are praying? So while we wait, we have to be doing these things like what happened in the book of Acts. We need to be in one accord. It's not, it's not, it's not about who could expound the scripture more. Or who know more prophecy. It's not about that. The important thing is our connection with God. Yes. Our relationship with God. Yes. And I always had to bring in Job's story here. What Job, what Job go through did not happen overnight. No. It was a constant relationship that he built with God. Yes. Day as well as night. Yes. Yes. The sacrifice he made on a daily basis. Amen. Yes. So he had this awesome relationship with God. So God knew him. So that's why he says, Satan, you have him. So, the experience for us, as we saw John, in these last days, is to have an intact relationship with God. And as we mentioned, we're going to get our, our testing time. Mm -hmm. And when we get our testing time, if we pass this test, God is going to give us a bigger one. Mm -hmm. And a bigger one. Yes. And a bigger yes. one. Yes. If, you, if you look at Abraham, he went through different tests. Mm -hmm. And that one, is, that one is important. So when, when I hear, hear El Randy says, we have to be tried in the fire. These are the tests. And God knows what we can bear, so He's going to give us what we can handle. Yes. He knows what we're capable of. Yes. But the important thing is, continue our relationship with Him. So prayer, fellowship, taking care of the needs of the new community. God-centered praise led the growing of the church. Yes. One accord. <laughs> when we fight here and, and who wants to be the head and who wants to be the not want to be the tail and you have more sheep than Indians and you name it we were not able to do what it did in us and there's a, another text which says and, and God acted the church daily so which means when we in one accord when we pray when we when, when we are together, we can do exploits for God. The disciple did exploits for God because there was in there was in one accord. Two key factors that we need to take with us in these last days. Two key factors. First, they had been with Jesus. You heard what I said? They had been with Jesus. Sometimes we come to church and when church finish at sundown, people wonder whether we have been with Jesus. Mm -hmm. The words that come out of our mouths, the way we dress, we spend the whole day in Sabbath and when, the, even before Saturday night finish or whatever we call after sundown, we wonder whether we have been in Jesus. What is telling us here the disciples was with Jesus? Because see, anytime you are with Jesus and you are in Jesus' presence, when you leave, you cannot be the same. You cannot be the same. And if you find yourself, I find myself being the same, something is wrong. It's the same thing like we come to church and spend how many hours here? Eight, nine hours. And we say we have been with Jesus. We have been praying. And if after sundown I am the same, something is wrong. Amen. It does not work so. So they spoke about a Savior. And they knew they had an intimate relationship with Jesus. 
intimate, close. They, they had experienced God with us even, and listen to that, and that's what is important here. Even when they was in prison, Jesus was with them. Amen. Even when they was about to be persecuted, Jesus was with them. And even when they was about to be ridiculed, Jesus is with them. The problem with us today, do we experience Jesus for ourselves? Or sometimes, well, we want our mother to experience Jesus for us, our father, or sister, or brother, or aunt. No. Each one of us sitting here today must have an individual encounter with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If, I, if we don't have it, we could pack up and leave. Yeah. It's wasting time. Yeah. We're wasting time. Because I I I I tell some folks recently, what sense does it make? Be, what sense does it make? Let, let's be practical. What sense does it make, Pastor Peters, come here for 30 years in church, yes. 40 years, yes. 50 years, yes. 10, 20, 25, you, you name it, or five, and still not in the kingdom of God? Does it make sense? No. Just think about it. So some of you don't hear people say, I've been in the church long? Yes. That, that don't guarantee no. eternal life. No. Being in the church long. And some of you beat their chest, you know. That, that, if you look at it, that's my seat, that's you, whatever. Yeah. That makes no sense. <laughs> what makes sense is when I die, I will rise in the first resurrection. Amen. Amen. That won't make sense. Yes. So when we quarrel, and when we fight, and when we first dumb here for all these years, and when Jesus comes, he say, I never knew it. Just think about that. Yes. Think about that. Going, going through what I call emotion. Yes. And that's what it seems. We are we, we on crunch time, the end of time, but we're still going through the most yeah. We're still in this rocking chair. Yes. We're still in this rocking chair. Secondly, they were, they were deeply rooted in the scriptures. I repeat, they, are, they were deeply rooted in the scriptures. So prayer and study of God's word. Take these two. Put it in your bosom and keep it there. Prayer and studying of God's Word. And I'm not talking, maybe when we have Bible class in church, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the individual sacrifice I make and you make to study God's Word. Amen. Because some of us, we only open the Bible when we come to church. Right? Sure. <laughs> we only open the Bible when we come to church. And believe me or not, see now we're in a great controversy. Satan telling you, that's okay, man. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. So I don't open it Sunday. I don't open it Monday. I don't open it Tuesday. I don't open it Wednesday. I don't open it Thursday. Mm -hmm. By chance. I may have to do something in Sabbath school Saturday morning, so by chance I open it Friday. Whoa. 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 By chance I open it. By chance. But the disciples and them was deeply rooted in the scriptures. Amen. Amen. If we are not deeply rooted in the scriptures, while we wait for Christ's second coming, people are going to fool us. They're going to fool us. And there is a saying, what 
glitter sometime always is our goal. They're going to fool us. So one, they knew who Jesus is. They had an encounter with him. He was part of their life. And two, they studied the scripture. And while I emphasize and study the scripture, that is the only defense. Yes. What else we have? My eloquence can't stand in the way. My good looks can't stand in the way. The money in the bank can't stand in the way. When the testing time come, is what we know from God's word. Yeah. That is the only thing we understand. Yeah. That's the only thing we understand. Here is something we can learn from the early church. Like the disciples of old, we need to know the Savior personally and intimately. And this phrase is very, very important. We have too much of that going on in our churches today. Grace cannot be communicated by ESC. You understand that? Most times, sometimes you ask a member, is what I what he has said. What somebody said. Did you read it for yourself? Did you study it for yourself? Grace cannot be communicated by ESA. Grace can only be communicated because I had an encounter with Jesus Christ. Amen. My testimony is not your testimony. Your testimony is not my testimony. And I always tell my church that. It's when you have an encounter. And a testimony is always a test. You go through a test. And God brought you out of that test. Amen. Too many times in our church we give reports, mm. not testimony. We give our reports. Mm. And with something. But a testimony is what God has done for me. Amen. So it had to come from inside. Some tests I go through where maybe I was maybe lying on a dead bed and the Lord raised me up or raised you up. So sometimes I sit back and I said, no, these are not testimony we give it. We give it reports. Mm -hmm. Because grace cannot be communicated by ESC. Mm -hmm. I had to experience grace myself. Yes. Yes. You had to experience grace yourself. Mm -hmm. And so on. That's, that's how important it is. And that's what the disciples was doing. Mm -hmm. In spite of the Holy Spirit and God's leading, they was able to preach with power backed by the Holy Spirit. So they had the experience for themselves. You see, salvation is not gained by a blood bond or a membership form. You know, we, we go around in churches and all about somebody who wants to make a point and your name is not a member of this church. Not a membership form. You know, and you have this struggle that you're not a member here, so you, you, you can't hold office here and other things like that. Salvation is not gained by blood bonds or membership form. It's a personal encounter with the risen Lord. Personal. Personal. I want to stretch that word. Personal encounter with the Lord. Not a church encounter with the Lord. It's a personal encounter with the Lord. It's not a pastor encounter with the Lord. Not an elder encounter with the Lord. A personal encounter. Underline the word personal. So it's a personal encounter with the Lord. It's the foundation for trusting expectation. Is is a foundation for trusted expectation. So the big question we, we may ask today. I knew you was coming. That what a little boy tells his dad. The question for us today, we might ask. How soon is soon? <laughs> Anybody could answer that? How soon is soon? 
For some of us, 20 years, 30 years, Jesus is coming soon. So how soon is soon? The early Advent understood that God was coming soon. It was truly soon. So, you know what they did? They sell all what they have. Pack away everything. Give away what they have. And other stuff like that. And they focus on the most glorious moment in history. The question still remains, how soon is soon? The answer is simply soon. It's soon. The songwriters say, he is even at the door. I feel his hands is holding the knob door, ready to turn the knob and push the door open. He's close. Matthew 24 tells us that. Look at his hands. Look what is happening. Mm. He's close. He is close. Soon Jesus will come to take his redeemed home. How? More than a hundred and seventy years or more has passed since that time. Since maybe I told the disciples that. Even more. But how soon is soon we ask ourselves as we wait? You see, one thing with an enemy as we, as we wait, he will put a lot of things in our minds and in our thoughts and other things like that. You know, and, and what, is, what is so vivid in our study today, when we talk about, the, when we use the word integrity, and Satan repeat that to Job's wife, and Job repeating the same, same thing to Job about integrity. Look what happened in the garden of Eden. Just one, Jesus says something, and Satan twists it. Jesus said, you shall surely die. What he said? What Satan told us? You shall not. One word he put in there, not. And the minute that play on the conscience, on the mind, the minute it gets in there, you realize Eve start rationalizing with Satan now. We must not rationalize with Satan. God said no, and no means what? No. no. But that is hard for Adventists today. You know that? You have, you have all the little strings of Satan language. If everybody is doing it. Everybody doing it does not make it right. No. And you have it in church too, you know? Everybody doing it. Everybody wearing it. That does not make it right. And then Satan tell them again, move from everybody now. Say Adventist is doing it. That still does not make it right. What make it right is thus said the Lord. So the same trickery in the Garden of Eden, let's use the same trick queen with Job's wife, but we have to understand what you're going through. I want my brother say he would sympathize with her, I would sympathize with her. She was a woman. I don't understand some things with them sometimes. I would sympathize with her because I am, the reason I'm going to sympathize with her, because most time we could talk these words. But when, 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 when the shoe is in our feet, we think differently. We act differently. When the rubber hit the road, we think differently because we are human. And that is why we, we, we must have certain relationship with God to go through certain things. Our relationship was not like Job. And Satan always likes to use weaker vessels. Mm, yeah. Believe it or not. Yeah. If he can't get you, you'll get the children. Yeah. They go straight from you. They go want to go their own way. Mm. They go want to come in any time, any hours in the night. What do you do? Yeah. That is the last days of the What are you going to do? Yeah. Pick up a cutlass and go behind you? <laughs> no way. 
You know it? No, I, I, I tell folks, if I was not questioned by law enforcement in my country, why should I be coming here questioned by law, law enforcement? No. We, in these last days, we had to pray for them. We had to be on our knees for them. There is a thing in the Bible, they can't go out of God rich. Then maybe you could go out of our rich, but not God rich. You see, when God ready, just like the prodigal son, they will come to their senses. He might take years, he might take days. All I have to possibly I keep praying for them. And believe me, not on our own, all the children of our churches. You, you, you realize there is a trend. You all want to be good. But because of the pressure of others out there, pressurizing them. So they will come and ask you, why, why sister so daughter is doing that and I can't do it? These are the questions they're going to ask you. All again, you see, Satan at play. Satan at play. So some give the, the children a lot of freedom. And they feel you too restricted and you too firm and other things like that. that that's going to play out in the last days. And I will say, as parents who are here, we got to keep putting them before the Lord Amen. night Amen. and day. Amen. Amen. Night and day. We don't have all the answers. And how good it might be in parental skill. We always need Jesus help. Amen. We always need Jesus' help. So the question goes on, how soon is soon? Life just cannot go on forever. Our resources are limited. Our problem seems unsolvable. Our selfishness is limitless. Yet we have this hope that Christ alone imparts. So how dark it may look, how difficult it seems, just remember, Christ alone have this hope. That is why we have been reminded in 2 Peter, let's read that for our final scripture, 2 Peter 1.19. If by chance we have any doubts or any fear, are we not certain at anything? Second Peter 119. Let's go. Second Peter 1.19. Are we there? Yeah. Read it together. We have also a more sure prophecy. Where are you? A sure word of what? Prophecy. Sure word of what? Prophecy. Completely reliable. Yeah. Use that word. Completely reliable. The Bible is completely reliable. Amen. We can trust the Bible. Amen. We can trust God's word. Amen. It's reliable. All other things can fail. But God's word will never fail. It will stand forever. So similar to Pentecost, we can see God's Spirit at work all around us. And brethren, don't worry, even though we read it in Acts. Sometimes people like to see the church fail. You know, overflowing. Don't worry that. Don't worry that. Don't, don't worry that. I am being reminded that a remnant out of a remnant yes. will be saved. So tell yourself, you will be Amen. in that remnant Amen. out of a remnant. Amen. So it's not always a crowd. It's not always the quantity that matters, it's the quality that matters. 
As long as we sojourn and we are help each other to make it on the other shore, God will always have a remnant. Amen. God will always have some remnant to stand for Him. As we use the word integrity to stand even though they have been fallen. Don't get clustered in the crowd because you're going to lose focus. Be in that remnant. And if you, if you read the spirit of prophecy, she will say, she prefers small groups. Yes. Where people get together, study God's word, and empower themselves. Amen. You know what I did? When, when you have a big congregation of 500, the pastor can't shake everybody. Huh? The pastor don't know who comes there. And we don't know who missing. Mm -hmm. That's all. But small groups, everybody meets everybody. Yeah. Everybody greets everybody. And it's time for us, don't come to church. I don't be in a church where you're talking to somebody. Does that make sense in the last days? No. We will not agree on everything. But we have to love each other. Yeah. Even our enemies. Yeah. So when we look at what the disciples do to become in one accord, mm -hmm. they put away the differences. Yeah. Yeah. And they bond together. Mm -hmm. So it's not about my idea. It's not about your idea. The common goal or the end goal is to see men and women find Jesus. Yeah. That's a common goal. So it was spread in mountain tops, in cities, inner cities, in jungles, you, you name it, the word was spreading. We will wait and serve because that has been the important thing that God wants us to do. So our prayer at the time of God's kingdom, in the midst of this world, pain, aches, you know what is going on, even in the midst of our own pain, we wait patiently, trust in God. Amen. We wait with that blessed hope, trust in God. Amen. Share it and give it. Don't feel well. My fridge is always fit. Always think about the person next door whose fridge is empty. Amen. So while we wait, we have to witness to it. Amen. While we wait, we have to share the good news to it. While we wait, we have to be praying as well. And on that great day that will sh outshine all of the days, we will run into the arms of our kindly Savior and tell him, Jesus, we know you are coming for us because you have told us so. Amen. Amen today. Stop playing seesaw in our Christian lives. Stop playing a long time ago as little boys and little girls we played that song in the river on the bank. Stop playing that in church. Is either you are in the bank or you are in the river. Because at any moment Jesus will come. Amen. I trust for each one of us today is to do what God expects of us. We have the examples from the disciples and Jesus himself. We have God's word that is reliable. And in the midst of what we might call a crisis facing our society. And I know most of us in this election cycle, we have our own opinion about the two candidates. You might ask us, what is our position? For those of us who can vote, exercise your right to vote, I would say. But pray that God give you the guidance to choose who you want there. Because remember, he put up kings and take down kings. 
So it's for us to, to pray that the one goes there will allow us to still have freedom of worship. Amen. Will allow us to, to, to be able to, to witness the others and other things like that. Mm-hmm. You know, some people might say, no, I'm not voting and other stuff like that. I always remind myself, show me an individual in this life who never made a mistake on this earth. Mm-hmm. But as we come to the end of time, let us be ready and stay ready. Amen. I trust today that God will continue to bless this church, bless us individually, bless our family. And most of all, just as the songwriter says, when the role is called beyond now, I hope all of us will be there. Amen. Bless the world. Father, we thank you for speaking to our hearts today. Amen. We thank you for the word that we can completely rely on. Help us in our shortcomings. Instill in us prayerful moments and prayerful time with you and our family and our friends and even our loved ones. Help us to study to show ourselves approved so that we can be ready at any moment to spend eternity with you. So continue to bless us and be with us throughout the rest of the Sabbath. But Lord, when all is said and done, may none of us here for one thing, but all of us be saved in your everlasting kingdom, together with family, friends, loved ones, and all those who we have labored for and shared the gospel with, will see Jesus when he comes. Until then, Keep us true, faithful to you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.